Hey guys, it's Nate here with some advice if you're trying to figure out your next data science project. Let's talk about the one and only project that you need to build that will help you gain full stack data science experience and impress interviewers on interviews if your goal is to jumpstart your career in data science. Let's break down the components of what a good data science project includes and exactly what an interviewer is looking for and why they're looking for it. I'll also let you in on a secret about this data science project and why I think it's the best one out there and the only one you need to actually do. So watch until the end to hear about what this is. So if you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel. Now let's get started. So one piece of advice before we start talking about the components of a good data science project, let me tell you about two things to stay away from when you're trying to find a project. Number one, avoid any analysis on the Titanic or Iris data set. It's been done to death and I don't care about your survival classifier. Number two, as you gain more experience, you can start to migrate away from Kaggle. So avoid Kaggle. It's to me too commonplace too ordinary, everybody does it. So unless you can rank in the top 10, I just stay away from it. Great, so with that out of the way, let's start talking about the components of a good data science project. Again, I'll break down the components of a good project and tell you what the interviewer is looking for and why they're actually looking for it. But basically as a summary, what an interviewer is looking for, what I'm looking for is a data scientist with real world skills, real world relevant skills in both coding and analytics, but also in using modern technologies and tools. This is gonna get you closer to becoming a full stack or fully independent data scientist. So here's a quick breakdown on the components of a good data science project. So number one, working with real data. Number two, working with modern technologies like APIs and databases in the cloud. Number three, obviously building models. Number four, making an impact, getting validation. And I'll explain a little bit about application frameworks towards the end of this video. All right, so now let's talk about each component in detail. So component number one, working with real data specifically with data that gets updated in real time. Streaming data, working with real data that users produce and working with data that is produced in real time helps prove to the interviewer that you know how to work with relevant data and timely data. You're not analyzing some data set that was produced in 1912, like the Titanic data set, right? You're basically working with data that was just produced and data that's updated frequently. So having said that, you're probably asking, well, how do I get a data set like this? So that's a perfect segue to component number two, using modern technologies in industry. So how are you gonna get that real life data set that is updated in real time? You can use APIs to collect that data. Almost all apps and all platforms use APIs to basically pass information back and forth. Learning how to use, configure, set up APIs to get the data that you need for your analysis shows the interviewer that you have relevant, keyword relevant data science skills to be able to do your job effectively. Some popular APIs, for example, are Twitter, Google Analytics, YouTube, Netflix, Amazon. Basically a good API for data analysis will include real-time updates, data and timestamps for every record, geolocations are really nice to have, and obviously numbers or text so you can actually do an analysis. So for other API examples, refer to the links in the description. So the skills you're trying to learn when you're working with APIs are these. Number one, learn how to set up and configure APIs in your code. For example, dealing with API tokens. Number two, learn how to use libraries like various Python libraries that will help you make API calls. And number three, how to work with data structures like JSON and dictionaries to help you collect and save the data from the APIs. All of these skills are skills that you'd be using on the job from day one as a data scientist. So as an interviewer, if I know that you have these skills, I would start seeing you more as an experienced data scientist than somebody that's just starting off. And this is basically a leg up and a bonus point to have on an interview. 
So now let's talk about the second modern technology to work with, databases in the cloud. So once you collect your data from an API, and maybe after you clean the data a bit, you probably want to store it in a database. Why? Well, number one, because like I mentioned before, the data that you're grabbing from an API is updated regularly. So if you pull the data again from the API, you're going to get new records. So instead of just pulling the entire data set again and cleaning the entire data set all over again, it'd be nice to just pull the new records, clean that, and then store that in the database. And so basically you'll just be storing all of your clean data in that database and adding new clean records every time you make an API call. Number two, every company uses databases and many use cloud services like Amazon Web Services, AWS, and Google Cloud. So having the knowledge on how to build a data pipeline with a cloud provider is a great skill set to have and it will set you apart from other data scientists. Again, if I was interviewing you and you have this experience, I'd be very impressed because I know that you can hit the ground running and make an impact from day one. All right, so component number three. This gets us to the part of a data science project that you thought was probably the most important, building models. So it's definitely really important to learn how to build and implement a model, whether it's a regression model or some sort of ML machine learning model. And that's kind of why I told you to start with Kaggle, because I feel that Kaggle will give you the experience you need in terms of building models. So if you just don't have a lot of experience building models, Kaggle is a great starting point. But while gaining experience building models is important, there's another aspect that's even more important. It's understanding the decisions you make and why you make them while building your model. So here are some questions you would need to answer when implementing your model. You'll need to be able to eloquently explain your answers to these questions on an interview. Otherwise, no matter how good your model is, nobody's gonna be able to trust it. So here are some of the questions. Number one, why did you pick your model? Why that model? What are you trying to accomplish with this model that you couldn't do with others? Number two, how did you clean your data? Why did you clean it in that way? What type of validation test did you perform on the data to prepare it for the model? Tell me about the assumptions of your model. How did you validate those assumptions? How did you optimize your model? What were the trade-off decisions that you made? How did you implement your test and control? Tell me about the underlying math in your model and how it works. What you don't see in this line of questions is how your model performed. I don't really care about that as an interviewer. I care about your thought process and how you made decisions. And I care about if you understand the underlying math of your model. So lastly, how do you know if you built a great data science project? Your project should make an impact you should have some validation from others. I understand that you're doing these projects to gain more experience and improve your skills, but the job of a data scientist is to help others by turning data into insights, into a recommendation that can make an impact on the business. So how do you even know if your insights and recommendations are valuable if you're building in isolation and not showing others? You need to show others your work and build something that they would find valuable. So there are three ways to do this. The easiest way, the first way, is to share your code with others that are part of data science communities. There are various subreddits out there like data science and machine learning that would be happy to review and, and look through your code. You can just put your code in a Git repo and share your project that way. But because you're just sharing code, it might not get the best engagement from the community. So another way, the second way, is to output your insights in the form of visuals and graphs. Build nice looking graphs that people want to take a look at. Share your graphs and write up your insights in some sort of blog article form. You can share your articles on various data science publications like Towards Data Science on Medium, or again, through various data science subreddits. And lastly, the hardest way is to learn an application framework like Django or Flask. Deploy your application using a cloud provider like AWS or Google Cloud 
and serve your insights that way. Your insights could be an interactive dashboard that you built using Plotly that users can kind of interact with, or it could be a simple API that users can connect to to grab your insights and recommendations. This is obviously the hardest, most involved way to share your work, but it's worth it if you wanna become a full stack data scientist and gain some software development experience. Any interviewer, any data scientist would be super impressed if you have this skill set. The main point in all of this is just to show that you built something valuable and that people find it interesting. Show the impact of your work. Your teammates and the interviewer would be really impressed, guaranteed. All right, so I ran through all of the components. Here are the components for a good data science project again. Working with real data, working with modern technologies like APIs and databases in the cloud, building models, and lastly, making an impact and getting validation, possibly from building an application. So you're probably thinking that this is a lot of work and it includes so many different skills that it's gonna take you years to master. And the answer is yes, it's supposed to take you years to master all of these skills to become a very good data scientist. But the great part of these components is that you can master them independent of each other meaning that you can learn all about databases and get good with that and then switch over to APIs and master APIs and then so on and so forth. So after a while, you just would basically master them all. And so now we come full circle from the intro. What is the secret to all of this? The secret is you don't need to do multiple projects to master these skills. This is basically one big data science project. You're building a data science infrastructure from end to end and learning the entire data science process. So once you build the entire infrastructure end to end, like connecting and grabbing data from an API to cleaning data, to then storing it on a database, to building a model, to then having a visual as an output, you can use the exact same framework in infrastructure to do other analyses. The only thing you probably need to do is just slightly refactor and revise your code. So for example, if you wanna analyze a new data set using an, another API, you can just use the same code, just revise it slightly to connect to another API and pull new data in. You can use similar code and techniques to clean your data and push it into a new database table, but it's a database that you already have running in the cloud. So there's no more setup or configuration that's really needed. So really, once you have that infrastructure set up, you can just do various other projects, learn various other models using the exact same framework with just simple revisions. So my advice is just to keep iterating, keep improving and keep building to build something that others would find valuable. So that's it for me. I hope this becomes your next data science project. It's gonna be the only data science project you're ever gonna really need to build. And it's definitely a project that would impress interviewers on your next data science interview. All right, so please leave a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe to this channel if you like content like this. Until next time, see you guys at the next video. Thank you.